everybody. Welcome to our final After 90 of the season. Marie Papadakis alongside Gareth Wheeler. Gareth, Toronto FC ended tonight on a high note. 4-1 win for the Reds. What do you think of the team's performance tonight? I thought it was very good and it's almost bittersweet, isn't it? That this is the final game. Yes, you go into a long off season on a high note, but in the back of your mind, you're always thinking what could have been and what should have been. Listen, a 4-1 win over an Atlanta United team that coming into this match was the top team in Major League Soccer. I mean, that says something. This was an Atlanta United team that maybe were without Miguel Amaron, but were still playing for the Supporters' Shield and Toronto FC took it away from them. And it was a deserved win for Toronto FC. I thought it was relatively comfortable. 4-1, it could have been 5-1, 6-1. I thought Toronto FC were very good in terms of their shape defensively. And in the attack, showing a little cutting edge. What did we say all season long, Maria? When Toronto FC scores first, they're a different team. They went out and scored in the ninth minute through Lucas Hansen and never looked back. Lucas Hansen was, I think, one of the top performers tonight. Two goals on the night. And I just think... He just had another extra energy to him. He really wanted to get out there. So what do you think of his goals and basically most of them anyways? Yeah, the brace was well deserved for him as well. And he's a player that's played a lot of positions. But I think the way that we saw him play on this final game of the season is the way that Toronto FC ideally wants to use him as an out and out right winger. He adds that pace, a little bit of width to the team as the group has been playing a little bit narrow over the course of the year. But because of injuries and various elements, he's been kind of playing as an out and out strike or more inside. On the outside, he just can get you with his speed. His technique is wonderful. And if you saw on both goals, they went to virtually the same spot in the low left corner. And I love the composure as well. So you hope that Hanson will be back with the team. Of course, he came on loan. That's something that should settle. But I think that he's endeared himself to all the Toronto FC supporters watching on. Goals have not been a shortage this no. season, as you and I were talking about, 58 goals on the season. So how does Toronto FC take that positive number after a season like this? Isn't that funny? Because you think about this year, they don't make the playoffs. 58 goals scored over the regular season is the second most in the club's 11-year history, which is, is, is pretty good, Maria, in terms of scoring goals. Now it's about keeping balls out of the back of the net. Unfortunately, a penalty was given, denying Alex Bono of the clean sheet tonight. Joseph Martinez, goal number 31, that's an MLS record. But I think that the structure of the team, and you see like a Chris Mavinga when he's in this group, how different they play. I thought that the whole group in its entirety had a lot more stability. They pushed Justin Moore up the field a little bit more where he's that much more dangerous getting him behind the back line. Ashton Morgan stepping in a left back. I just really like the whole overall structure. And you don't just defend in the back four, you defend as an 11. So I thought there was more balance throughout the field, especially with the captain and his work rate, which has been sensational all season long. Michael Bradley keeping the group together. Well, for more on the final game of the season, let's hear from the team. When you have the opportunity on the day to beat a team, to deny them a trophy, to deny them a, uh, you know, the point total we had the year before, for sure it's there is some motivation into that because you have pride as a player and you have uh, pride as a team. Um, and on the day, we wanted to finish the, the season, what has been a challenging season, on a positive note. And uh, again, I think the, the commitment, the work rate, um, the group really fought together today and executed and, and probably had some more chances out there potentially and uh, it was just a good day, good performance. <laughs> no, la verdad que, que contento, contento por haber conseguido los tres puntos y, y nada, en lo personal por, por los goles. I'm very happy that, that, that we got the three points and, and obviously on a personal note, the goals as well. I think, you know, we all had um, very high aspirations and a lot of uh, targets we wanted to hit this year and obviously um, defending our title and Playing all the way to December was one of them. Um, unfortunately, uh, we didn't reach that goal, and we're all disappointed in that. But uh, we really had only one thing in control uh, in our hands tonight, and that was to come out and get a good result and have a good performance. I think we achieved those. A player who has been absolutely phenomenal this season, Gareth, Jonathan Osorio. What do you think of him tonight and overall in the season? Oso, when he was substituted off, and I thought that it was planned by the head coach, Greg Vanny, you wanted to take off that player at that time, so he, the crowd here at BMO Field could show the respect for the player, because Azorio unquestionably is the Toronto FC Player of the Year. Ten goals, seven assists. He had one tonight as well. This season was a revelation for a player that, you know, before he signed that contract, we were standing here today, you'd be wondering if he was going to come back as he was playing in a contract year. But he's earned it, and he deserved the applause of everyone inside BMO Field, as well as the bench. Everyone on the bench was up on their feet as well, which just shows you what a special season he has in the place that he holds at this club.
The Canadian has absolutely had an incredible season, but for someone who I think this game meant a little bit more was jo uh, Jason Hernandez. I think it was very bittersweet for him, you know, coming onto that pitch at the end of the match. What do you think of him in his career? Uh, it's been wonderful. Now, we're not sure if this is the end, but it certainly sounds like it. If that's the case, I mean, he can go out with his head held high. Uh, Greg Vanny said post game, it's a player that it speaks volumes that he's as good of a guy off the field as he is on it. And over the course of his 14 career, I mean, now in the latter stages, he doesn't get all the playing time in the world. He had 10 appearances over the course of the year, but the way that he works with training, works in training, the way that he works with young players and within the team concept, he's a role model for so many. So when Michael Bradley and the group came over and gave him the game ball after the game and they all embraced Hernandez, you completely understood what he means to this group. And he goes out, he's, he brought an MLS Cup championship here to Toronto. That's nothing to sneeze at. So if Jason's here or elsewhere, nonetheless, it was a very special night for Hernandez and his family who were in attendance. Over the next few days, there'll be a lot of press conferences and you can hear from the team. But to follow, head to torontofc.ca for all of the latest news. Thank you so much for watching. Are we out. We out. <laughs>